Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are Florida. Tonight, baseball tonight. Weekend series starts. The Baltimore Orioles and the Miami Marlins. Fans coming in. First look at the Orioles interleague play back into it. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Maybe a change of opponent for the Marlins. Maybe getting out of the National League. Anything. Marlins desperately trying to get back on the winning side. You know, you start thinking of a lot of things, Rich. A change of league, a, a new team, a team that has never played the Miami Marlins. And how about Cuban Heritage Night? A change of night, too. Longest home losing streaks. The ball club has lost seven straight, but eight straight at home, and that's that's even more disturbing. I've got a positive note tonight. I'm going to think that way. You start thinking negatively, you might lose another game. You got the Major League best RBI man in Giancarlo Stanton in the lineup. You got Martin Prado who's hitting four straight. He has four hits the last two ball games. You have Ichiro in there who's made a career of hitting the Baltimore Orioles. I'm looking at it that way tonight. Well, these birds are even more scary than the snakes that just left. Because Baltimore has an offense packed with power and big stars. I mean, you run into a lineup that is loaded. Yeah, they have some guys that we don't get an opportunity to see a whole lot. They have a guy named Chris Davis who a couple of years ago, all he did was hit 53 home runs and drive in 138. He did that in 2013. He has eight home runs this year. This guy has some legit power. How about Adam Jones? Adam Jones is the glue to their ball club. A gold glove center fielder, a four-time all-star. So Adam Jones in the lineup. And then the local kid out of Miami Brito High School, just 10 minutes away. Manny Machado, 22 years old. He's hitting leadoff. He's at the top of the order because all of a sudden that knee is healthy and he's brought some excitement to the O's. So there you have it. Miami trying to get back on the winning side, trying to end this losing streak. Baltimore is in town. It's a three-gamer. It starts tonight, and it is Cuban Heritage Night, an Alvarez-Jimenez matchup.
Open Heritage Night. Marlins and Orioles getting ready to go. Oh, you never know what you're going to find out in center field. Let's go out to center field. Craig Mitterveni, Jeff Conine. Gents. Very noisy with that Cuban Heritage Band, but a uh, great night here for Marlins fans, and hopefully they'll get a chance to see Dan Jennings' first win. But some great Cuban players in Marlins history. Not all superstar-type players. Some very good, some good. Some just played the majors. Yes, absolutely. A couple of current players from Cuba right now, Chavaria and Fernandez. A couple of former teammates of mine, Levon Hernandez and Arestes Destrade at Terhera. And I'm going to let you take that bottom name there. I'm is scared though. Is scared though. Is scared though. And Michael Tejera was a was a bulldog type lefty pitcher. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. That uh, post World Series team. He did a pretty good job on the mound. He was very courageous. Of course, Jose. We hope to see as soon as the next month, perhaps on the early side. All right, Henderson Alvarez will make his fourth start. Can the Marlins expect a better start? He had the one bad inning. Other than that, he wasn't overly. Uh, sharp, but not too bad either. Yeah, you take away that one bad inning, and I don't think he had that bad of a start last time out. He's just coming off the DL, so health is an issue, but I think he's going to get stronger and stronger every start he goes out. All right, he'll face Ubaldo Jimenez, who is three and three, and has pitched very well of late. Comes off a loss, but he pitched well against the Angels last time out. Yeah, two quality starts against the Angels and the the, the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Interesting fact: Ubaldo Jimenez is the received the longest free agent contract to a pitcher in Baltimore Orioles history four years. Uh, hey how do you like the O's logo with the cartoon bird because you didn't get to play with that one. I did not do the uh, cartoon <laughs> bird. I'm, I'm with the old O's. Oh no thing. I, I like the cartoon. All right interleague play coming up first to three against the Baltimore Orioles next. Seventy thousand vehicles now. Visit AutoNation.com. Roof is closed, windows closed, AC on. Henderson Alvarez is on. Alvarez trying to bounce back from his first start since coming off the disabled list, and it wasn't a, a strong one. He lost to Atlanta by a score of six to nothing, and he'll be facing a lineup with a lot of thunder in it. Jay Alexis brings you Buck Showalter's Baltimore Orioles. Manny Machado, high school 10 minutes from here. Miami's Brito High School. 
Jimmy Paredes has been a godsend for the Orioles at second base. Adam Jones, of course, the all-star, the gold glover in center field. Chris Davis, big power numbers there. Travis Snyder is in left field. J.J. Hardy, the gold glover, is back. He was on the disabled list much of April. Alejandro de Aza, a former Marlin long ago, is in right field. Caleb Joseph. Just keeping the seat warm. Matt Wieters is about three weeks away. And Ubaldo Jimenez will hit ninth for Baltimore. Well, let's see. We got a little different look for Henderson Alvarez tonight. You get the white spikes. He's got the uh, pant legs up a little bit. So the 25-year-old right-hander making his second start since uh, coming off the disabled list with the shoulder and elbow issues. He had that one start in Jupiter and then Lost to the Braves, gave up nine hits and six runs in five and a third. Only his fourth start all season. How about the defense for the Marlins tonight? There's Ichiro getting the start in left field. Marcelo Zuna, Giancarlo Stent, Prado, and Echeverria on the left side. D. Gordon, Justin Bohr with the start over first base tonight. And JT Real Muto behind the plate. BMW bringing the defense. Buck Showalter is in the house. What a job he has done in Baltimore, reviving baseball in the Inner Harbor. And uh, the Orioles last year, 96 and 66, they swept the Tigers in the division series and lost to the Red Hot Royals in the American League Championship Series. But there were 14 years of losing, 14 years of not going to the postseason. He erased that in 2012. Well, I tell you what. Uh, what Buck Showalter has been able to accomplish. He's been manager of the year three times with three different teams the Yankees, the Rangers, and the Orioles. Baltimore outlasted Seattle in a uh, marathon because of a two hour rain delay yesterday. Dan Jennings 0 4 now as the skipper looking for his first win. Boy, Dan Jennings talking about the, the role as a skipper. It's more emotional. It's more heartfelt. And you feel the players grinding. And Boy, he'd like to get that first win tonight. Alvarez, of course, with that traditional old fashioned wind up to start things. And he'll pitch it to Manny Machado. And zips in a fastball for a strike. Machado. Young sensation out of Miami makes his offseason home and Hialeah goes after a breaking ball and he pops it up. Justin Bohr with Gordon behind him. Bohr makes the catch. Alvarez has it out. One of the things that we'll have to keep our eye on, and actually a good sign, the second pitch to Machado. One of the things that Henderson Alvarez got in trouble with that last start, he started off a lot of fastballs and got hit hard early, then changed up a little bit. Made an adjustment and threw more breaking balls. Side session. Chuck Hernandez to iron that out. Jimmy Paredes, 25 year old Dominican, who has really burst on the scene this year. His first eight years as a pro, he has spent in the minor leagues with some cups of coffee along the way. This is a guy that was claimed four times on waivers by the Marlins actually long ago Baltimore Kansas City and then Baltimore again. He originally signed with the New York Yankees. He's a switch hitter. And there are some who will say and he has been doing this for a while his best position is at the DH spot. But with that not in order here. He's at second base tonight. Redis pulls it down the line and it takes a right turn wide of the bag. Evens the count at two and two. Well, Miami certainly in the throes of just an awful stretch right now. Marlins have dropped seven in a row, 10 of 11. They've dipped 10 under the 500 mark. Baltimore has somewhat underachieved. This is a team that many thought and probably still has the makings. That weeder's on his way back. To contend and again win the East, which is out and it's three and two. But Baltimore comes into this game two under at 18 and 20. I tell you where they have really stumbled, Rich, is on the road. They played all right at Camden Yard, but five and 11 on the road. 
That ground ball is going to find right field. And Paredes has himself a single to right. If you're a Marlins fan, get ready for the American League East. The Marlins will see a lot of the East. Buck Walters ball club three out. The Rays. Surprising many. Four over and on top in the East. The Yankees half game back. Marlins have four against the Yankees. And the Red Sox surprising New England being where they are. That's true. Adam Jones. One of the real stars of the game. 29 year old. He'll turn 30 in August. San Diego native. He has kind of become the not only leader on the field but in the clubhouse for this Baltimore team. This is his eighth year with the Orioles four times an all star. Alvarez saws him off. Moore gets an out. Tries for the out there. And he got him. Good Good choice. Choice. Nicely done. Three six on the double play. Justin Moore to a Danny Echeverria. Alvarez looks sharp. This ball game is underway. Marlins and Orioles. First of three. A weekend in Miami. Awaiting Ubaldo Jimenez. Dan Lexus brings you Miami's lineup with Gordon at the top. His average at 386. Marcelo Zuna in center. Giancarlo Stanton in right. Martin Prado in the cleanup spot. Justin Bohr will hit fifth. JT Real Muto in the sixth spot. Ichiro gets the start. Great career numbers against the Orioles and good numbers against Ubaldo Jimenez. Danny Echeverria is at short. Henderson Alvarez will hit in the nine spot. And there's a look at Ubaldo Jimenez. Sort of a renaissance for Jimenez at 31. Yeah, he's really made a, a turnaround. He had a, a sprained ankle, a bad ankle injury last year. So he threw just 125 innings. Line shot center field. D. Gordon's got a base hit. Forget about that. Good swing by D. Gordon. Want to see him get back on track, hit number 65 on the year. That's just a solid swing. No question about that. Miami got three runs in yesterday's ball game. Jumped out on the Arizona Diamondbacks, but the Diamondbacks caught them. They went back and forth to the end. Arizona beat Miami seven to six. Marcelo Zuna had a couple of hits and drove in a run. And he's up with Gordon at first. Jimenez, a big man on the mound. 6 5 2 10. He chases Gordon back with a throw over. Four of five. 
All right, opposing base runners. Marcelo Zuna squares the bunt, something he probably hasn't done a whole lot in his career. Now he looks down to Brett Butler. Yeah, I, I don't think if you're going to move a guy like Marcelo Zuna up to number two spot, let him hit like he's a number four or five hitter. You don't want him to bunt. The other thing, the last time D. Gordon stole a base was May 4th in Washington. He's running on the pitch, and Ozuna pops it up. Joseph is there, and he makes the catch. Gordon gets back to first base. That's a real interesting sequence. Whether Ozuna was squaring, thinking Gordon was going to run, and he was just protecting him, whether he thought he was going to bunt, and now he gets a great jump, and he swings on a 1-0 pitch. That's where the inexperience, we talked about Ozuna last year hit second 14 times, but that's not really where he hits. The inexperience in hitting there, he didn't realize. If you have a guy who hits there a lot, he realizes D. Gordon got a great jump and he takes the pitch. Now Stanton with Gordon at first. And Jimenez chases Gordon back. Now Stanton has faced Ubaldo Jimenez seven times. He's three for seven with a home run. Gordon was leaning and it just gets back. I think one of the amazing notes on John Carlo. There's the lean and the quickness to get back. Is it four of Stanton's five hits on this homestand have been home runs. The Orioles want to look at that and in doing so. Buck Showalter with a foot out on the field. And he signals to a hey, he's OK with that. Yeah he's OK with. That. He says hey, OK Paul restart the game. So Paul Emil working behind the plate. Jordan Baker. Pat Holberg Andy Fletcher on the bases. Gordon runs Stanton takes Joseph's throw and he is in there. We talked about the last stolen base May 4. D Gordon has had just one attempt since that time and that was May 11th. Good jump. You could tell. He had he had the, the skittish feet. He wanted to go. He was trying to pick up a steal. Great jump. He went with a head first slide and beat the throw. So Gordon gets the bag. It's his 13th. Or the, as they say, Rich, he was runnerish <laughs> at first base. It wasn't a bad throw by Joseph. And now Stanton with one out. Let's see how Jimenez approaches him now Gordon's running for third pitch is taken and he swipes the bat. Maybe the life that Miami's been looking for they can find in their leadoff hitter. Well they have so far here in the bottom half of the first inning a great swing by D for the single and then he picks up two stolen bases didn't waste any time to take third infield is back Stanton into left field the base hit and Miami's on the board first. Well, you talked about some good signs. You and I always love to see Giancarlo drive in runs without the home run. It's fun to see the home runs. RBI number 40. It continues to lead the major leagues in that department. Just a solid swing. And trust me, a hitter's mindset is always different with a runner at third in that situation than if D. Gordon had still been in second. Stand the runner at first, and here is Martin Prado. On Marlins Live tonight, Martin Prado and Tom Kohler speaking out on the losing streak and what this ball club's going through. And I think Tom Kohler probably said it best. Prado was very eloquent about it as well. That one popped in the air. And into the seats. Kohler essentially said, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks about the managerial change. The Marlins obviously, I mean, it's been a week worth of just shocking news for 
front office for players. It doesn't matter what you think. You still have to go out and play and play hard and play well. Into the back, into center field, and a base hit. So Prado follows Stanton's hit with a single of his own. And here comes Justin Bohr. Now Martin Prado's got it back together. Five game hitting streak. He has five hits now in his last 10 at bats. This one off the end of the bat. You have to always look up if a ball goes into center because Adam Jones plays a very shallow center field. And I loved what those guys said, Rich. That's a professional way to approach it. You got over four months of baseball to play. Justin Bohr now, who grew up in the Beltway, remember George Mason just outside of Washington, D.C., so you know that he's watched a lot of Oriole games growing up. This has to be special for him. The Nationals obviously came online about 2005, but as a small kid, the only game in town were the Orioles. He probably watched some Jeff Conine, right? He probably did. Saw that change up on the first pitch and he managed took a little bit off on that pitch. There was a time where Ubaldo Jimenez may have been the best pitcher in baseball. And that time was 2010. He was an all star in Colorado. He had an ERA under three and he was 19 and eight. The amazing thing about Jimenez that season. 19 and eight sounds good. And it's a great year. But he was 15 and one at the All Star break. That strike three call down goes Bohr. Well, he's improved on his command. That ball moving, good two seamer. Walked 77 last year. That was second in the American League. Much improved in that area this year. Yeah, last year he had an ankle sprain, missed a month right in the midseason. Now Real Muto takes a breaking ball for a strike. Miami trying to pay this inning off with a, a little more. Than the one run and three hits they've got. Real Muto with runners first and second and two outs. Pulls a ground ball to third. Machado the short way to second. And the Marlins will settle for a run on three hits and a one nothing Miami lead.
presentando un Toyota. En Miami, Marlins Park, on Cuban Heritage Night. Good night to go down to the Taste of Miami and get yourself a sandwich. Chris Davis, Travis Snyder, J.J. Hardy for the Birds. Big shift for Davis and a big bat with Davis. Alvarez misses. They count one and zero. Oh. Davis, the 29-year-old out of Texas. And it's one and one. And as the Marlins do after it gets to that point where they don't think any bunt will be laid down. Prado then goes over to the right side of the infield. Prior to that he was over on the left side because if there's a bunt Perry Hill feels he's a little more familiar with that side of the diamond to field any slow roller. Last year a tough year for Davis coming off that monster year in 2013. 53 homers in 2013 last year. He had 26 in 127 games. Pulls it board dives missed it Alvarez gets there and from the outfield Gordon throws him out. I think Justin Bohr when he sees that on video will realize probably should have just gone to the bag but the Marlins get the out. You can vote for your Marlin All Star hopefuls. The 2015 insurance All Star game ballot is out. You can vote 35 times at Marlins.com on your computer, tablet, smartphone, handheld device, watch, whatever it takes. Pooler upon. Help select starting lineup for the 2015 All Star game and vote today. So a 4 1 put out in your book there. And here is Travis Snyder. Uh -huh, there's that slow breaking ball that the entertainer will feature every once in a while. Whether it was good or bad with Justin Bohr uh, covering, there's this slow pitch. The good news, he's got Alvarez on the mound. You know he's going to get over there to cover. Alvarez long ago a shortstop before he became a pitcher. And misses away. So already early on we've seen more breaking balls from Henderson than in his last outing against Atlanta. And there's that power change up at 89 miles an hour. It just sinks and runs away from the left handed bat. It's for a, a guy that's never seen Alvarez. Few of these hitters have, of course, when he pitched for Toronto. It's a pitch you don't see a lot. I mean, you're thinking maybe it's a two seam fastball, but then if he jacks up his fastball, all of a sudden it's a little bit off that. Here's a guy that the Orioles are, are hoping to get going and that's J.J. Hardy who's been a, a really nice player in the big leagues for some time now. Hardy last year nine homers but for three years he had averaged 26 a year. And he had the game winning RBI yesterday and the win over Seattle. Alvarez going right after him. Counts one and two. I think it'd fool a lot of people if you if you told them the next home run that J.J. Hardy hits will be number 170. Hardy lifts that one in the air. Stanton over towards the corner, reaches, missed it, and slams into the wall. And I suspect the ball may have glanced off the wall before it got to his glove. They all arrived at about the same time. I would also expect there may be a little damage to the wall. But John Carlo walks away looking all right. Yeah when it gets there at the same time that's a tough play.
Here's another question if you were to ask. Which major league shortstop since 2011 leads in home runs. I don't think a lot of people would vote for J.J. Hardy but he does. Hey yeah, you'd hear Tulowitzki's name thrown out there by just about everybody. Tulowitzki had not been able to stay healthy. Yeah Hardy's been a lot healthier although this year. A left shoulder strain had him on the disabled list. 2 2 coming. Alvarez slow curveball misses down low. Alejandro de Aza is on deck for the Orioles. Ground ball, Prado backhands across the diamond in time, and Alvarez. Has faced the minimum, giving up a hit in two innings. Ichiro is coming up one nothing Miami. Jimenez has this assortment of birds playing behind him. Yeah, he's got some gold behind him. It's Travis Snyder in left. Four gold gloves for Adam Jones. Alejandro De Aza, a gold glove for Machado in 13. Hardy has three. Paredes, Chris Davis, and Caleb Joseph does the catching. Ichiro. If the Baltimore Orioles were to do a Bird killer list guys that have had great careers against their ball club. Each row would be on it. Obviously, a, a long span, not only in Seattle but also the two and a half years with the Yankees. A lot of at bats against Baltimore, and a lot of success too, and some surprising power numbers. He has a season worth of at bats. He has 553 at bats. And 10 homers against the Orioles at a 331 average. I was thinking too about the defense. The Orioles off outfield has recorded 11 assists. It's tied for first. One of the reasons Camden Yards is not a big ballpark. So you're not playing as as deep as you would in other ballparks. And as we look out at their outfield, they're all very shallow with each row up there. We told you Adam Jones plays shallow just about everybody. Nitro just gets a piece. Christian Yelich getting the night off. Nitro getting a start. And he lines that fouling into the seats. Now stays at three and two. If you just joined us, Miami got a run in the first. D. Gordon a single. He stole second, stole third, and scored on a Giancarlo Stanton single. 40 RBIs now for Stanton. Marlins will get three hits in that inning. 
and a one nothing lead. Nitro flips that one into left field. There's a base hit. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. I mean, he flipped away a couple of pitches that weren't right. All of a sudden gets one that's there. Just a beautiful swing. And another base hit for Ichiro against the Orioles. Here's Echeverria now. Brett Butler giving the signs. Echeverria stepping out. You know, one of the issues for the Marlins in the Diamondback series, you have a, a, obviously a new manager, a new bench coach. You have to figure out signs to go from the bench out to Brett Butler, and then Butler to give the signs to home. So it's it's not easy, obviously, to change managers, let alone to change to a manager that has not given signals before. Most managers leave that job to their bench coach, and that's Mike Goff. A manager generally will tell the bench coach what he wants. He'll relay it out to the third base coach. He'll send it out to the diamond. Echeverria, that's into the gap. Jones over for it. Ichiro is not stopping. On his way to third, Etch on the strong throw by Adam Jones is back with a loud single at the corners. And here comes Alvarez. The Marlins have brought out some really good swings tonight. Echeverria, for those of you who always want to put him somewhere else, in the number eight spot now is hitting over 370. When he hits in another spot in the order, he's one for 31. Keep him where he's comfortable. That's an amazing breakdown. Adam Jones showing off his great range and arm on that play. All right, we'll be interested to see if uh, Alvarez will swing away. Will he bunt? And, you know, he's got a. A speedy runner on each corner. If he lays down a good bunny, could get a run home. The thing about Alvarez up there, you have options. If you're DJ, because he swings the bat pretty well, you see the 228 average. He also drops down bunts pretty well. So you, you've got a few options. I would expect he's be he's bunting here. Swings and fouls it at the plate. The counts 0 and 1. You were talking, Rich. About the manager, and this goes throughout baseball, relaying the signs to the bench coach. Sometimes it's actually someone else on the bench because if the other team suspects, okay, we'll just zero in on the bench coach, then it could be somebody else giving signs out to Brett Butler. And there may not be a better savant <laughs> of baseball than the guy in the other dugout, Buck Showalter. Alvarez, ground ball to right field, that's a hit. There are the options. He loves to swing the bat. He loves to entertain. The Marlins right now are singling Ubaldo Jimenez to death. Six singles, the first nine through the order. Boy, he's already helped himself. He made a fine play covering first base on that 4 1 put out. And he's picked up a base hit and an RBI. Now D. Gordon. Gordon, of course, a, a great bunner, but also a hot hitter. He singled in the first. Hot hitter over the course of the season. His last uh, week to 10 days has been a, a dip down from the lofty heights of 435. He finds himself at 389, a rather pedestrian 389. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's see how Miami plays it here. Will Gordon be bunting and dashing? Will he sacrifice or will he look for a base hit? Uh, he was trying to punch it through with the infield moving. And it counts one and one. By the way, that 389 still about a 40 point lead over number two. 
What's the scouting report tell us about Ubaldo Jimenez? Lots of moving parts when you watch his delivery. Sink and run on the fastball. The change is kind of like a split. At times he can get in inconsistent with the curveball, but he's been much better with it this year. Gordon, the top of the order. Miami's got runners first and second. Alvarez at first, Echeverry at second. Did he go? No. Boy, he almost did. A lot of pitchers, when they get two strikes on D, they'll try two things upstairs or the curveball. Going to chase a few bounce curveballs on the West Coast. Pulls that one on the ground, and the Orioles will settle for an out at first, and that's essentially a the same as a sacrifice bunt sets up nicely for Marcelo Zuna. Flashback Friday, that will be tonight. It's brought to you by Dodge. Post the best vintage Marlins photo of yourself. Use the hashtag Flashback Marlins. We'll select the best photo and feature it in the post game. Now, this is a more Comfortable spot for Ozuna and RBI spot. Infield is actually in. They're about halfway, but they're more in than they are back. Ozuna fouls it off. Jimenez with that fastball 92 miles an hour. And that's one of the differences from Jimenez at 31 as opposed to that real nice run in Colorado. When he was third in the Cy Young voting in 2010. Well, he was in the upper 90s at that time. You mentioned uh, how he pitched that year at Coors Field. In his career at Coors Field, 30 and 19, and a very respectable 367 ERA and over 60 starts. 367 at Coors Field is. Probably uh, the equivalent of below three, like a 2 8 or a 2 9. Yeah. One and two to Ozuna. Alvarez is the trail runner at second. And Chabria is at third. Miami a run in the first and one here in the second. Little squiver coming home as Echeverria sows the throw and he beats it. No chance at all for Perez. Great jump by Echeverria because it was a squibber. If you're a second baseman, you've got to go to first base there. You're going to have no chance at the plate. Good job by Echeverria. Good job by Ozuna making contact on a, a breaking ball moving away. He squibs it off the end of the bat, and the Marlins pick up their third run. And so here is Stanton. With runners at the corner, Stanton drilled a single to left to drive in the first run. Two across here in the second, a three nothing lead. Ozuna and Alvarez at the corners. Stanton's RBI total sits at 40. Best in the National League. 0 and 1. Adam Jones in center field. Not real deep. That's the, the most shallow we've seen any center fielder play with John Carlo up there. Ball up and it is one and two. Six hits, all of them singles, and the Marlins have made Jimenez work. 
good ball strike ratio, but this will be pitch number 41. He's only thrown nine balls. And that one comes in and deflects off the bat. Yeah, Count stays one and two. When he's missed, he's missed in the strike zone and he's missed his spots. That's one of the reasons the Marlins have been able to pile up six hits and three runs. And his misses away. Now the Orioles, remember yesterday they played Seattle, there was a two hour rain delay, and they used six of their seven relievers yesterday trying to grind it out. They ended up getting the win. Tillman, their starter, went just three innings. And Stanton, with some patience here, has run the count to three and two, and that'll start Ozuna from first. Well, excuse me. It might start Ozuna from first. We'll count one out. Alvarez across the diamond. Let's see if Ozuna's running. Nope. Stanton swings and misses, and that's why. He got that hanger, but it kind of stayed in on him. It backed up. Yeah, backed up. I mean, your eyes light up when you get this pitch, and you think it's going to float a little more over the plate, and it backed up, and it stayed inside. So it's a mistake pitch that turned out all right for Jimenez, not so good for Stan. Of concern, though, for Buck Showalter and his pitching coach Dave Wallace is the fact that Jimenez has had to extend himself in these first two innings. There's uh, Dave Wallace there, very, very well respected pitching coach in the major leagues. Spent a lot of time in the Dodgers organization with the Mets a little bit. Has been uh, credited with helping to turn Jimenez around. Now Prado. Prado dumped a single into center in the first. Ball in the strike. Men is after Colorado in Cleveland. Over the middle, playing there is Paredes, and he steps on the bag, inning over. Miami picks up two more and leads it three nothing.
and a great flavor around the park. And now there's a great flavor in the booth. Mm. Look at my partner, shameless Tommy Hutton. Here. I'm ready. I'm ready. The Cuban food has been delivered. Vince and Brian, what do you got, guys? Uh, some rice and black and black beans here. We have the sausage. Jody Pond. Okay. All right. Set it on down there. Oh, shrimp. This is grouper. Camarones. Ah. Oh. And a ground ball the second. D. Gordon on the first to get the out. Have some plantains here, Rich, as well. Nice. Oh, this is nice. Now I know why you napkined up. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you. Muchas gracias, senor. Thanks for the delivery. Thank you. Taste of Miami. You don't want to get it on the tie. That's why. No, you don't. <laughs> well, Henderson Alvarez has a 3 0 lead, and he goes right to work getting a ground ball out to open up this the third inning. Alejandro Deaza bounced out. Caleb Joseph now, the number eight hitter for the Orioles. Joseph. The catching duties right now. We mentioned earlier, Matt Weeders is with the ball club this weekend. Weeders has been in expen extended spring after Tommy John surgery last June. Well, the Orioles have him this weekend here. He's going to catch some sim games, some bullpens, batting practice, and then he'll report to Double A. Buck Showalter told me today he thinks and plans on having Weeders. On the 4th of June, when he's eligible to come off the 60 day DL, join the team and start to play. He won't catch every day, probably every other day to start with. Ground ball third, Prado collects it, and Joseph is out number two. Well, there are a couple of guys, Weeders certainly one of them, and the other one we mentioned earlier, Adam Jones, that are the real stable, the real glue. To this Baltimore club, and they need both of them in the lineup. Here is Jimenez. It's an Oriole team that many feel is better than their record. Grounder to first. Boer has it. Steps on the bag. Henderson Alvarez looking like the old Henderson Alvarez. News retransmitted any form accounts that descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Friday night in Miami, weekend series.
Marlins trying to snap a seven game losing streak and a rut which has seen them drop 10 of 11. They've come out tonight and put three runs early up hoping to beat the Orioles the weekend series tomorrow night the game is on Big Fox and then we're back at it on Sunday. Good crowd in the Budweiser bar the balcony. Clevelander seems to be hopping. We've got a big serving of uh, Cuban delights here on Cuban Heritage Night. And we always think whenever it's Cuban Heritage Night, we talk about baseball. We always think of our good friend Cookie Rojas. Cookie, longtime broadcaster, former coach with the Marlins, always a guy that we would lean on when it came to anything about Major League Baseball, but any questions of, about the uh, Cuban baseball as well. Justin Bohr smacks one to left and it's caught there, a diving Travis Snyder, but an impressive at bat for Bohr, who has uh, really changed his approach this year, driving a lot of balls and hitting them hard to left field. Yeah, he has uh, Travis Snyder not known for great defense, but gets a good jump on that well hit ball off the bat of Justin Bohr. Cookie Rojas, by the way, played for the Cuban Sugar Canes. So. Very uh, well ensconced in Cuban history. And I found out that uh, Cookie's been given a nice award this year as well. Cookie's been awarded the 2015 Roberto Clemente Award in Sports Excellence, given out by the largest Hispanic organization in the country, the National Council of La Raza in Washington, D.C. So, our good friend, congrats, Cookie. They made a wise choice. Yes, they did. JT Real Muto with Ichiro also due up. Not much of a rest for Ubaldo Jimenez. You get a little more of a rest in the American League. He made the last out. He was out there for a long time. He's got 52 pitches overall. And those first two innings for him were long ones. 16 and then 31 pitches. Real Muto swings and fouls it. Yeah, you, you talk a lot about, you know, abolishing pitchers hitting. And, and one of the areas everybody's concerned, oh, they might hurt themselves when they hit. But one of the other areas that they have to deal with is what you just brought up a, a long inning. Then he had to bat last inning. And you know not a whole lot of opportunities if he was in the American League he'd be over there sitting on the bench. Count full three and two. Dan Heron and Mike Wright. The matchup tomorrow night. That one pulled to third. And then Miami's own Manny Machado throws out JT Real Muto. Baseball tomorrow. Fox Sports One's got the Brewers and the Braves. Of course, the Marlins and the Orioles are tomorrow night on Fox. A 7 o'clock start. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern on Fox Sports One. You're home for baseball every Saturday. And here is Ichiro, who, with that hit, the single, pushed uh, right on by Babe Ruth on the all-time hit chart. Uh, he, you know, it's funny. He doesn't want to talk about that, but it's just a, it's just a marvel watching him. Now has between Japan and the U.S. 4,152 hits. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Baltimore a team that he's hit hard and, and done well against. He's had a 20 game hit streak against them. In fact, Ichiro, according to Elias, in the modern era, has had a 20 game hit streak against seven different opponents and no other player has even reached six. 21 with the one tonight. Flips that one into the seats. That's amazing. So seven different teams he's had a 20 game hit streak against. 
His career average against Baltimore over 330 is seventh among active players. And he taps that one foul. He has to be the type of hitter that just drives pitchers crazy. Because when they make that good pitch, he'll just foul it off. And he drew a walks. Last foul ball brought some anxious moments. I know it's tough to hold a glove and a microphone at the same time. With your producer speaking to you. That's true. <laughs> well, we had the shift on, so we had Craig three seats over. It's a uh, modern saber metrics. <laughs> Help out with that. Here's Echeverria, line drive single back in the second. Echeverria's running, good jump. Oh, and Echeverria fouls it at the plate. And Echeverria looks up, and says, "Oh, you know what? In in that case, it isn't as bad as maybe others because even though Henderson Alvarez has a base hit, he's on on deck. And if Echeverria steals, they may pitch around." At Chaparria, but Ichiro had that base stolen. And Ichiro had that look like, yeah. hey, hey, I'm 41 out yeah, here. Yeah, I'm not going to do this a whole lot. <laughs> Marlon stole two bases in the first. D. Gordon got second, and he got third. <laughs> if anyone can regroup and run again and, and get the bag again, it would be Ichiro. Not running. Echeverria almost the same spot. Line drive into left. Echeverria poked his nose under 300. He came in at 297, but two base hits have taken care of that. Yeah, he's uh, he's saying I like living in that 300 neighborhood. With swings like that, he'll continue to reside there. Beautiful. All right, here is Alvarez. And Alvarez knocked in a run with a base hit to right. That was in the second. Whether whether it's just Alvarez being Alvarez or whether it was a planned strategic thing. Alvarez you can see he's got the the high pants showing lots of sock and sort of a, a white shoe look. Yeah he's got the nice look tonight. Hey, you change things up. You never know. He's got the high top kicks. But he's behind in the count 0 2. See, Jimenez just tries to throw a fastball by him. He did, but he got it outside. How about this note? In the four game series against Arizona, the Marlins averaged seven hits a game. They have seven already tonight. In the dirt. It's two and two. And I think just early on, we have sensed and seen uh, some nice enthusiasm and aggressiveness on the field. Alvarez hits it in the air to left. Travis Snyder is there, and he makes the catch. Marlins leave a couple, lead it after three, three nothing.
Machado, Miami native, looking forward here to playing in his first ever game tonight in his home area. It's always been a dream for me to come home and play in front of my hometown, in front of my, you know, my family. So it's going to be a good time, and been looking forward, to, looking forward to it for a long time. You haven't played here since high school. Since high school, high school was the last time I got here. <laughs> After I got drafted, went up and been up in Baltimore since. Third pick overall, 2010, played for Brito High School, was a big Marlins fan, went to the two World Series matchups and followed them closely. said he even had a Jeff Conine outfielder's glove as a youngster and remembers as a kid watching our colleague play. He's really excited, guys, in the, uh, as you can imagine, this happens all the time. His teammates have been riding him for a bunch of weeks with all this Miami stuff they kept hearing about, but he's happy. He had this one circled on the calendar right at the beginning of the year. Well, he certainly burst onto the scene in 2013. Thank you, Craig. And he was an all star gold glove winner. 51 doubles in 2013. Unfortunately, that season ended with the knee injury. Lines it to right. Stanton over to get it. And Machado has a hit. Yeah, I, I will say he's just happy that he has a healthy knee after all the troubles that gave him. And as a young player, that's always a concern. At surgery, but he's bounced back well, and actually they've been hitting him at the top of the order. He has seven stolen bases, seven out of eight this year. His on-base percentage at 3.45, and so Alvarez second time through the lineup. Jimmy Paredes had a base hit, a ground ball to right. A lot of ground balls first time through the order. Alvarez had seven ground ball outs and a strikeout. His one out in the air was the pop up from Machado on the infield. So Alvarez looks a lot better than he did against Atlanta, where he went five and a third, gave up six runs on nine hits. Machado not running, fastball runs away, and it is one and one. Everett Cabrera is a Baltimore Oriole, and he's on the disabled list. He's close to coming back. He can play, obviously, up the middle. Both short and second. Red is a guy that will DH a lot. Obviously, none of that here. The Oriole pitchers were out hitting early. Little tapper at Chavaria shovels it. Gordon turns it and safe at first. Big collision out at second base. Machado and Gordon. Gordon got the throw away, took a pretty good hit. What a what a well balanced, terrific feed Echeverria gives D. Gordon because he's moving in the opposite direction. He's coming toward the first baseline and then just gets it back to him. Stepping behind the bag is D. Gordon, and he takes a good shot from Manny Machado. That's a one of the differences that we talk about often a second baseman from a shortstop having to deal with that. Adam Jones. Sharp single into left field by the diving Martin Prado. And so Jones has a hit. Bat shatters on that hard two seamer in on the hands. But Jones comes out on top of that one. Now Davis. Eight home runs this year. Last year of course not only an oblique injury but also the 25 game suspension. For amphetamine use. Davis against Alvarez. Alvarez has allowed a home run. In his three starts. With all the ground ball outs. That he has tonight a good illustration it's not easy to. Lift and separate. And hit one out. Against Alvarez. And Alvarez is 26 starts. Here at Marlins Park. An ERA of 2.83. So he's kept a lot of balls in the ballpark.
2 0 oh on a dangerous hitter in Chris Davis. Davis hits a high deep drive right center Ozuna at the warning track makes the catch both runners tag Jones will hold first and Paredes ends up at third that would have been way out of Camden Yards deep breath everybody exhale he just missed that one. Chris Davis used a pretty big bat too. And he just got under that one and he's thinking about Camden Yards right about now. Yes, he is. Utah Street, right? That's the <laughs> street that runs between. Yeah, that's not Johnny Utah either. <laughs> Here's Travis Snyder now. At the corners, two outs. Another guy with some power. Well, Snyder, just one home run this year. A Blue Jay and a Pirate in his career. Yeah, we used to see Travis Snyder, PNC, when he came to town with the Pirates. We'll be at PNC next week, Rich. Yes, we will. And he was a teammate of Alvarez in Toronto. He was a Blue Jay starting in 2008 when he got up for 24 games. He was up and down with the Blue Jays all the way through. 2012. Rich, being a, an all knowing state of Washington expert, it has been said of Travis Snyder, he was the best hitter to come through the state of Washington since, since Grady Sizemore. Oh, okay. well, yeah, I would go there. I thought you were going to drop a John Olerud on me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I got to throw a John Olerud in that group. I think John Olerud. I'm Olerud. not sure who said that. All right. You could go in, in to an interesting argument. Is it John Olerud, Ron Sando? Who's the best hitter to ever come out of that state? Wow. Well, Ron Sando's in the Hall of Fame. Here's a 3 1. Snyder pops it towards the wall. Prado. Craig again without uh, a glove a clipboard this time. I think Craig called off Prado that time. See, uh, we have the Baltimore scouting report. We got it from our friends at Sun Sports with the Rays. We have the Orioles scouting report, so we knew exactly where to position Craig. Knock the power out. Three two runner on the way and Alvarez misses out. So no runs yet but a bit of a, a uneven inning for Alvarez. You can enter now for a chance to win a trip to the Major League Baseball All Star Game on Fox. You and three of your friends just upload two photos. Foxsports.com fantastic All Star now through June 3rd. J.J. Hardy bags loaded big moment here early for Alvarez. Hardy drives it. Not in the left center and Ozuna has plenty of room is there and makes the catch. And Alvarez teeters but he doesn't topple over. Still three nothing Miami.
Get Checkers Authentic Philly Cheesesteak. Try the new meatball sub. Pick yours. By Subaru of Pembroke Pines. Price, service, selection. You're going to love us. Sunset in South Florida. D. Gordon in the box. Bottom of the fourth. Baldo Jimenez throws a strike. Miami has a 3 0 lead. Gordon got things started for the fish. Back in the first, a single and a pair of stolen bases. Jimenez misses up and out. Ninth time in D. Gordon's career, he's stolen second and third in the same inning. Gordon swings and misses. At a breaking ball. Jimenez has worked hard. Already 73 pitches. A walk and two strikeouts. Gordon lifts it foul. Seven hits all have been singles. It's okay though because a lot of times you and I talked about. The reliance. On the, the home run and we saw that a little bit. From the Marlins. With JT Real Muto with uh, Giancarlo. Gordon swings and misses. Ball gets away. Gordon is aboard. D. Gordon scampers down to first. It'll go as the third strikeout for Jimenez. Here comes Marcelo Zuna. Boy, he chases that off speed pitch. It gets under the glove of Joseph. By the way, came into the game six for 17 and throwing runners out. So, a pretty good percentage. Now, remember in that first inning, Ozuna, when Gordon got a great jump on a 1 0 pitch, popped one foul. It happened to Ichiro as well. They've had great jumps against Jimenez. Here's the tough part about that for Ozuna. You get him in that number two spot, but, but you put him there and you tell him, don't think you're a number two hitter. You, you're, you're still the same hitter. Don't change. And remember when Ozuna started out so slowly, the, the key word that Frank Manichino was able to communicate to him was be aggressive, get aggressive. And so you don't want to kill that on, on the account of him worrying about Gordon. It's essentially go up there, do what you do. And let it fly. But right now, the Orioles are worried about Gordon. They just pitched out. Gordon runs. Ozuna swings and misses. Joseph's throw. He is safe. Third stolen base for D. Gordon of the night. Another really good jump. Good acceleration. And you noticed uh, he's staying with the head first slide. And able to stay on the bag too. Remember he stole third as well. That was in the first. Jimenez. Ozuna swings and misses. Counts one and two. Stanton is on deck. Zuna, Stanton, and Henderson Alvarez have the RBIs. Hopped him up. Infield. Davis will call for it. And he'll make the catch. And here comes Stanton. Remember, tomorrow night is Big Fox. We're back on Sunday. South Florida Honda dealers will get you ready for that Sunday game. It ends the homestand and the series. Greg Minervini and Jeff Conine will be your hosts. Tom Kohler gets the ball for the fish. Miguel Gonzalez, a right hander, who's 5 and 2 with an ERA in the low threes, pitches for the birds. Stanton fouls it back. Now, Stanton ripped an RBI single to the left in the first. Jimenez then struck him out in the second. I think the up part is what uh, 
startled Stanton. Good crowd tonight. They're into it. Marlins fans, O's fans. Well, the Orioles have certainly a a tie into this area. They trained in Fort Lauderdale for a while. When Buck Showalter trained was in Miami for a while too. When Buck Showalter was a Yankee, it was his manager in Fort Lauderdale that gave him the nickname Buck. Oh, that's a laser, oh, oh. and it's just foul. Look out, Andy Fletcher down there, the third base umpire. Fletcher muttering to himself. Everybody had to look out, and that just was foul. Wow. Good call. Good call as he's getting out of, of way of a ball ripped as hard as he's seen one in a while. How would you like to be Brett Butler right now? Butler trying to coach third a lot closer than Fletcher and tries to get it an angle such. Look at him. He'll back up as the ball comes to the plate. He'll, he'll almost back up to that warning track just to get out of range. But he has to be in that spot with Gordon at second. Yeah, and with nobody on, he'd be that far away on the other side. Maybe the coaching box. Further than Fletcher. 3 2 fastball up, and Stanton swings and misses. Well, he's gotten John Carlo a couple of times tonight to go out of the zone with a backup breaking ball that was up and with a fastball up there. Now Prado. And Gordon with a spin move. Gordon and JJ Hardy collide. Jimenez misses down low. Now you go back and look at a lot of the Rockies pitchers' records, and you'll see Jimenez in the top three at just about all of them. He also threw a no hitter for the Rockies in Atlanta back in 2010. Prado brings a ground ball out towards short. Hardy across the diamond in time to get him. Marlins lead Gordon at second, but lead this game 3 0. Tonight's cold hard fact brought to you by clean crisp Coors light best home record interleague all time it's Marlins against Orioles believe it or not 11 and 1 that's minimum of 10 games Marlins 
and the rest of the National League East playing their American League brethren. If you could put it that way. Yeah, the last time the Marlins played the Orioles, these two teams matched up was in 2010. Of course, the Marlins in the other stadium, so the Orioles have never been, most of them, to Marlins Park. Alejandro de Aza has had a, a nice career for himself. Pulls that one wide of the bag. De Aza, a Marlin. Originally a Dodger. Marlins drafted him in the Rule 5 draft back in 2004. Liner into left and a base hit for De Aza. Since then, a nice run with the White Sox, and this is second season with Baltimore. Thursday, June 18th, an American tradition comes to Fox and Fox Sports 1 for the first time as the greatest golfers in the world converge on the Pacific Northwest for a chance to stamp their name in the history books. Exclusive coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins June 18th on Fox Sports 1, Fox, and it streams live on Fox Sports Go. Liner in the right center, shallow, Stanton on, and he'll knock it down on a hop. It's going to be a base hit for Caleb Joseph, and Baltimore has something going here in the fifth. Giancarlo tried to give a little decoy to De Aza. About halfway there, he realized he wasn't going to get there, but he's putting the glove up as if to say, I've got this. To kind of have De Aza pause for a bit. Buck Showalter sending up a pinch hitter as well right here. Delman Young. Who we've seen over the years with many teams. And amazingly, Delman Young is still that. He's 29. I would have guessed he would be early 30s. But he came up early. Remember, he was the first overall pick by the Rays back in 2003. Alvarez, remember, ended up leaving the bags loaded in the fourth. So Baltimore, who used their bullpen a lot yesterday, is going to have to get into it in the bottom of the fifth. Alvarez trying to get to that bottom of the fifth and keep a, a three nothing lead intact. Well, this is a guy Buck Showalter knows can swing the bat. With Detroit in 2012, Delvin Young was the ALCS MVP against the Yankees. He was six for 17 that series. A couple of home runs and big pinch hits. Delman Young has been a very good postseason player. In fact, he's been to six consecutive postseasons. Gets into that one. It's deep. Ozuna back. We'll play it off the wall. Around third coming home is Deaza. Holding third is Joseph. And Delman Young delivers a mammoth. Pinch hit RBI double. And of course, in the American League, you're not using the pinch hitter as much. It's only the fifth pinch hit appearance for Delman Young, but you know what? He's three for five with two RBIs now coming off the bench. That ball was smoked. Chuck Hernandez on his way out. A lot of other runners score, but with nobody out, Caleb Joseph doesn't run that well. Nobody out. Bobby Dickerson, the third base coach, decided to hold him at third base. Joseph ends up in third. Young out at second. It's the top of the order, so you've got uh, dangerous bats here to navigate. Manny Machado, Jimmy Paredes, and Adam Jones. Miami's bullpen is up. Brad Hand. Alvarez only 59 pitches in. Pop 
popped up back and out of reach. I think the only reason you'd get somebody up now is if you had reason to as far as maybe something bothering Alvarez some entry it's still pretty early in the game and he's got a real low pitch count ground ball short at Chavaria on to first low throw and Bohr bails him out picks it the Orioles have their second run as Joseph comes across well I tell you what Justin Bohr did bail out at Chavaria because he got that in between hop. Boy, that's a nice play on the other end. Yeah, that very easily could have been a not only a throwing error, but a ball that bounces into the seats where the run would have scored from second. Now Paredes. One for two with a single. Alvarez gets a strike. I think what we're not seeing from Henderson Alvarez is 95 to 96, which we saw a lot more of last year. Ninety three, he's topped out with his fastball. We've seen a few of those power changes at 89. Yeah. Yeah, at times last year we'd see 97. Even. But he still knows how to pitch. Struck him out. Just like that. That's a big strikeout. Paredes is out. There's two down. And I think he was looking for breaking ball or changeup. And he came in with a good two seam fastball, got it to come back. And framed beautifully by JT Real Muto. And it's right there on the knees, plenty of the plate. Well, now he just has to get Adam Jones out. <laughs> Who came into the game fifth in the American League in batting average. Bounce into a double play in the first, singled in the fourth. Jones to center. Ozuna is on it and makes the catch. Well, Baltimore ends up getting two. Miami retains the lead. 3 2. Marlins. Marlins on social media and there's several ways to connect. Go to Marlins.com slash connect full roster of Marlin players on Twitter. Of course you get the official Marlin accounts on Instagram, Twitter, all of that. Share your Marlin memories. 
get going. There you have it. A way to hook up social media and the Marlins. Tyler Wilson comes out of the bullpen for the Orioles. It is his second appearance in the big leagues. Well, he was just uh, called up pitching for the Norfolk Tides and he was a starter there. So they put him in a, a relief role but he had seven starts in triple A. Justin Bohr struck out lined out. See a guy a, a guy pitching that went to the University of Virginia a guy hitting that up the road. Went to George Mason. There's Bohr always a way back. always a way to find a nice connection. JT Real Muto and Ichiro also scheduled. That's a swing, says the home plate umpire, Paul Emmel. And it probably is. Two balls, two strikes. Oh man, Bohr, it's deflected. The throw to first, he is out. Wow. Marlins may look at it. It appeared that Wilson had to go up to get the throw, whether he left the ground and left the base. Miami's replay room is busy. Ball is stung, even though Justin Bohr a little bit out front. There's the deflection, the high throw. Ooh, Hard to close. tell if Wilson's right foot got down there. Did it? Yeah, yeah, I think it did. It just beat him. I think it did. That's a nice play on all ends. Good reaction by Paredes at second. And a good job by Wilson getting over. 3 4 1 is how the out is recorded. Here's real Muto. But we've seen a 4 1 put out at first and a 3 4 1. Put out tonight. Pat Shine working the monitors in the Marlins replay room last year led the National League in that successful challenges. Sooner or later, there's going to be a category for that. It's going to be an award. There has, has to, be. to be. High fly ball. Adam Jones is there and he makes the catch. And you could present that award in slow motion. <laughs> On multiple screens. <laughs> Toyota Trend. Longest home losing streaks. All time for the Marlins. 11 is the longest. That stretched from 94 through 95. And the 94, it's interesting because 94 was the strike year, correct? Yes. And so that's why it went from August all the way to 95. Well, you just just want to see this ball club put together some consistency. It's certainly better than the seven game losing streak. You'd like to see DJ get off the schneid, so to speak. Get his first win out of the way. Count two and zero. Oh. Each row a single and a walk. Tyler Wilson. Balls behind three and zero. Oh. Hold out three and two. It's it's really interesting watching Ichiro hit. There are times he didn't do it there, where he gets in that hitter's count and he'll just stay on something inside and try to turn on it the way he did on the home run he hit against Alex Torres. But that time three one he still tried to drive it into left center. 
And he takes strike three called. A fastball from Wilson. Miami goes down in order in the fifth. On to the sixth. A one run game in Miami. With the Marlins up 3-2. Of three to two tomorrow here at Marlins Park. The man to my right will be throwing out the first pitch. Now take a good look at him because if you're an Oriole fan or a good baseball fan, you'll recognize the resemblance right away. Mike Weaver, not the former boxer, but the son of the great late Earl Weaver. Good to see you, Mike. And I know you're so excited when people get to see you and talk Orioles baseball about your dad, huh? I love to talk Orioles baseball and I love to talk Marlins baseball. Yeah. I li live here in Miami now and I'm up. Pretty big Marlins fan also. However, not for the next three games. <laughs> next three games, I'm straight O's. Your dad, Hall of Fame manager for younger fans, uh, won the World Championship in 1970. He had the, the bitter loss to the Miracle Mets in 69. Oh, broke your heart, huh? Oh, broke my heart. A college kid crying in his first year of college. That was my dad's first full season. And the amazing Mets came back and got him. Now we see all these stolen bases in this series. The Marlins got some throw outs in the last series. Your dad didn't like the stolen base. Uh, he wasn't. He didn't like to give up outs on the bases. What he said? Only got 27 outs. Don't be giving them up on the bases. <laughs> he was pretty much a stickler for that too. Pitching defense, and he loved the three-run homer. Oh, loved the three-run homer. Boog Powell, Frank Robinson, all of those all guys back then could hit him. His number retired. His number four in Orioles history. He had a chance. Uh, they dedicated uh, when after he died in January of 2013. They dedicated a day to him. And you got a chance to talk along with Jim Palmer and other greats about your dad at the uh, Orioles game at Camden. Yes, I did. It was a great experience. Needless to say, I was quite nervous out there with all those professional speakers, uh, Brooks Robinson and Jim Palmer. Well, I think I held my own okay. Yeah, what made him a great manager? Wins, his yeah. competitiveness, for one thing. Uh, his res he was very much respected by his players and loved Loved by the fans of Baltimore. Good luck tomorrow throwing out the. You, you better practice. Oh, yeah, I'll get warmed up. Don't you worry. I don't want to bounce one out there. Golfers may see him. He's the starter at the very nice bottom at your country club in Weston. Good to see you, Mike, and uh, good luck tomorrow throwing that ball out. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much. Uh, that's Mike Weaver. Got, how about that resemblance, Richard Tommy, huh? Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. He, yeah. He's great. I had a chance to talk to, to Mike a few times, and he is a good Marlins fan. He is. <laughs> Earl's widow uh, Mariana will also be out there on the mound. Earl Weaver once said on my tombstone just right. The sorest loser that ever lived. <laughs> See how would Earl have taken to replay. Less uh, confrontation with umpires. Not so sure he would have. He would have gone for it. Travis Snyder now. 0 for 2 is Snyder. Chris Davis, a leadoff walk. It's in the sixth. Miami, a one run lead. Now, Alvarez 
while the Orioles were getting a, a couple runs in the fifth. Had activity in the bullpen. Steve Ciszek is up now. Brad Hand was up. In that fifth inning. And it's Ciszek up now. And Alvarez is only at 73 pitches. Sudden the command not quite there the way it was through the first three innings. JJ Hardy, third man scheduled. Number is in need of a ground ball. And he misses on four pitches. So back to back walks to open the sixth. Wednesday an epic international showdown the United States men's national team takes on Mexico the Americans look to extend a four year unbeaten streak against their historic rivals and of course since it's U.S. against Mexico it's in the sold out Alamo Dome in San Antonio coverage begins 830 Eastern only on Fox Sports one streaming live on Fox Sports go. I think there are a few things going into this. Just the fact that it's his second start since uh, coming off the disabled list. DJ watches from the dugout. Chuck Hernandez on the mound. Think about this Orioles team too. The way they've put it together. No Nick Marcakis this year. No Nelson Cruz this year. Of course, Marcakis with Atlanta, Cruz in Seattle. As well, a guy that put together a, a really nice and surprising year last year has yet to get going until yesterday, and that's Steve Pierce, who had 21 homers in 102 games last year. He hit a grand slam against Seattle. To get the, the scoring started. Hardy finished it. And Baltimore got a win. Hardy bunting. And he takes away. And Alvarez can't find the plate right now. Yeah, back to back walks. Couldn't throw a strike to Snyder. And there's the, you know, just having just interviewed Earl Weaver's son. There's the conundrum, isn't it, for managers in a, in a case like this? You look at Alvarez, you saw that breakdown. Ten balls, two strikes. Do you give him an out? With the sacrifice bunt. I'm really surprised that Hardy's bunting here, actually. Guy that has uh, power potential. He is having an off year, and that's probably why. Diaz is on deck, bunting, and Alvarez misses. And he counts 3 0. Oh, and I now guess the other thing we don't know, he might not be bunting. Some guys will just do that if they're in a take situation. They may be forcing Alvarez to throw a strike, and he has it. Alvarez throws a strike and I guess now we'll know for sure here on a 3-1. Because he turned and squared there. But he really wasn't going to bunt on 3-0. So he may have been doing that earlier just taking all the way. Davis and Snyder not great speed out there for the Orioles. He squares and he bunts and it's foul. So. He was bunting but now. Alvarez, who was behind in the count, three and zero, oh, is at three and two. They tried to direct it up the third baseline, fouled it off. This could be a huge pitch right here for Henderson Alvarez. He bunts it. Alvarez turns and throws it away. Down the left field line, into the corner it goes. One run scores. And the game is tied. And Alvarez had the opportunity to get the out at third. And he airmailed the throw. Wow. 
arguably one of the best fielders the Marlins have. We see Alvarez make good play after good play. Two surprises on that play. Number one, I can't believe J.J. Hardy was running 3-2. So he just tries to go back to the mound. Not a lot of speed at second base. Alvarez had plenty of time and throws it down the left field line. Wow. There's nobody out. The Marlins are now going to walk Deaza. You got Joseph on deck now. If they're walking Deaza, does that mean that Cishek comes in to face Joseph? I, I would have to think so because you have a pitcher out there struggling to throw strikes. The last thing he wants to do is deal with the bases loaded, and by walking Deaza intentionally, that's the situation at hand. Yesterday in the Marlins 7 6 loss to the Diamondbacks. They misplayed two bunts. On neither did they get an error. But on neither did they get a key out. And as expected. DJ making the move. You, you would always I would anyway you see it done the other way prefer. The pitcher you're going to take out walk the, the batter intensely you don't want the reliever to come in and do that because he's. Been throwing strikes down there. So an inning that's just kind of unfolded here. Here comes Ciszek. There goes Alvarez. Kendall Toyota called to the pen. Opportunities in a tight game, and the Marlins didn't convert either one. And Latos had it stuck in his glove. He knew it. He had a play at third. And then a tough play for JT Real Muto. Was looking at second, fumbled, and couldn't quite get it out, but got the out. ATT U versus Rewind. Plays like that are usually involved in seven game losing streaks. Steve Ciszek is in and in a real tight spot. Bags loaded, tie game, nobody out. Orioles catcher Caleb Joseph is up. The pitcher for the Orioles is on deck, but in all likelihood, he's not going to see the, the batter's box. Ciszek misses outside. Fastball command, an issue with Ciszek. Boy, he's got a double play candidate up there. Joseph doesn't run that well. Gets a strike. And remember, Snyder is the runner at third. He's not a blazer. If a ball draws Bohr or Prado in, they may come to the plate. C checks 1 1. And he throws a strike. It's 1 and 2. Baltimore has a run without a hit. The error by Alvarez scoring Chris Davis.
it's out. Two balls, two strikes. See, Shaq's 2-2. Two, two. It stays at 2-2. Two two. Three runs, six hits for the Orioles. Three runs, seven hits for Miami. Henderson Alvarez disappeared briefly down the uh, runway to the clubhouse and quickly is back out on the bench. Trying to help Steve Ciszek get through this. 2-2 two, two coming. Joseph yeah. in the center. That's a base hit. It'll score Snyder. Hardy's right behind. And the Orioles get a big hit. Take the lead. 5-3. Still nobody out. Had a couple strikes on him, but the, the problem for Steve Ciszek all year has been location, location. Up a little bit, middle of the plate, and with two strikes, Joseph with a solid, solid swing. Yeah, go! Well, this works out well for Buck Showalter. Not only does he get the lead, but he can bunt with his pitcher. Yeah, he may have gone in another direction. It's a foul ball. Depending on where the runners are, how many outs there were, he may have pinch hit in this situation, but he has the luxury now. Remember, we told you Wilson came up from Triple A, had been a starter there, so certainly capable of giving Buck Showalter some innings. But a pitcher coming up in an American League system never sees the batter's box. In the minor leagues, double A and above, the only pitchers that hit is when a National League affiliate plays another National League affiliate. Oh, and two. And with that extended game with the rain delay yesterday and six relievers working, you're right. Buck Showalter needs the innings. There's the bunt. Ciszek has it. And the Marlins get it out. Which hasn't been easy on the bunt play in the last couple of days. Baltimore is set up now with Manny Machado, the hometown kid, who could inflict even more damage here in the sixth. Three across. Baltimore has wiped out Miami's 3 0 lead. Front that slider, it's one and one. Foul back. Two and two. Machado, major surgery on the left knee this spring. Actually, last year a sprained right knee. Count two and two. Marlins were cruising. They had Henderson Alvarez, who looked sharp early. But from the fourth inning on, Alvarez was not the same. Swing and a miss. Machado is out. And here 
comes Paredes. That's a good put away pitch for Steve Ciszek. Get two strikes, expand, and got Machado to chase. Jimmy Paredes is one for three. Boy, the Angels, Rich, have certainly opened things up at Fenway Park. Middle of the fifth inning, 11 to three, the Angels over the Red Sox. Marlins will be playing in Fenway right after the Fourth of July. Next opponent for Miami, Pittsburgh. Pirates are home and leading the Mets four to one. And that's now in the bottom of the eighth inning. That is a Garrett Cole start. He's a struck out nine. C Shack knocks it down, gets to it, no play. And Paredes has a hit. The Orioles have another run. It is 6 3. Pretty good pitch. But we've told you Paredes has been hot. Ciszek gets a glove on it. Can't get it cleanly. And the ball trickles far enough away an infield base hit for Paredes. Let's see. 6 3 lead now. But Ciszek has to face Adam Jones. And Dan Jennings is going to take the baseball. Ciszek exits. And Miami goes deeper into the pen. A Kendall Toyota call to the pen. Big inning for Baltimore. T-Mobile game changer. Adam Jones since 2012. Major League rank. No one plays more games. Only two hit more homers. No one's driven in more runs as an outfielder since 2012. Steve Ciszek gives up the infield hit to Jimmy Paredes. Gave up the two run hit to Caleb Joseph. The inning started with back to back walks. With Henderson Alvarez still on the mound. He then threw away a, a possible. Force out at third threw it down the left field line on a bunt. By J.J. Hardy. The run scored there and it was on four of crossed. For the Orioles Brian Morris. First pitch a strike. The 
word of encouragement there from a guy who's seen a lot in this game, Frank Menachino. Talking about some other scores, Rich, the Nationals 2 1 lead over the Phillies. Scherzer pitching well. Bryce Harper, 16th home run for Washington. Broken bat roller. Gordon has it and gets the out. But Baltimore with four runs takes the lead. 6 3. Six three Baltimore on top bottom six in honor of Memorial Day weekend Fox Sports proudly supports folds of honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information visit Fox Sports supports. Dot com. In Miami tonight Baltimore and Miami opening a three game series the Marlins in the throes of a seven game losing streak. A run of 11 games of which they've lost 10. A three nothing lead has disappeared. Baltimore is on top. Six three Danny Echeverria. Leads it off. Tyler Wilson still in there. Wilson's breaking ball misses in. For Wilson his second inning in relief. Of Ubaldo Jimenez, who went just four, so if Baltimore holds the lead, you see Michael Morse on deck. Tyler Wilson could qualify for a win. This is just his second appearance in the big leagues. Brad Hand in the bullpen. Pitcher spot is up second. That's why you saw Morse with a bat on deck. So this right hander out of the University of Virginia Tyler Wilson has a shot at his first major league win Echeverria has his third hit of the night and they've all been well struck two line drives to left center and that one to right. Boy he has Rich he's had three just perfect swings staying on the ball Frank Manichino Lenny Harris they're loving these swings from Echeverria tonight. Again, keeping his name in conversations when those around baseball talk about shortstops in this game. We know defensively what he does, but keeping above 300, he's going to keep his name right there. Michael Morse down the right field line. It's got a chance to get in. It does. Into the corner. Deaza picks it up. 
And Chavarria is flying around third. He will score. And Morris a pinch hit double. Miami gets one run back. Michael Morris really struggled in 12 games with the Orioles last year. So happy to do that. He hasn't had a whole lot of pinch hit opportunities. It's only his second pinch hit at bat this year. He's one for two. Nicely done, just like that. A quick run. Now, D. Gordon, who is one for three and has three stolen bases, takes a strike. Singled in the first, stole second, stole third, and scored on a Stanton base hit. Bounced out in the second. Struck out in the fourth, but on a wild pitch, he reached first. That's how he swiped his third bag. Pulls a ground ball into right field. That's a hit. Morse will stop. Gordon's got a, another single. And there's nobody out. Runners at the corners. Now you get into Ozuna, Stanton, and Prado. And picking up this first win in the big leagues, turning out not to be a, an easy chore for Tyler Wilson. Good to see D. Gordon getting back on track. It's his 19th multi hit game. Davis can't get it. Paredes can't get it. And no sense taking any chances with Morse, especially with nobody out. Buck Showalter on his way out. Baltimore's pen is active. Well, they have Tommy Hunter. Loosening up now. And a Kendall Toyota call to the bullpen. 6 4 Baltimore. the corners and nobody out. Sunday this series finishes on a Sunday fun day. Marlins and Orioles at 110. You can pick up the Pepsi 4 for 74 pack. Get you four tickets for KMB Franks four Pepsis for $74. Kids get a Marlins batting practice pullover courtesy of Stanley Tools. Kids can run the bases in the Diamond Dash. Marlins.com for tickets. That would be Tommy Hunter. Those would be his numbers. Tommy Hunter arrives here at a crucial part of the ball game. The Orioles just put four on the board in the top of the inning, took a 6-3 lead. Miami has answered with three consecutive hits to make it 6-4, and here is Ozuna with Stanton looming on deck. Yeah, Hunter, one of those who pitched yesterday for the Orioles against the Mariners, pitched an inning, gave up a couple of hits, no runs. One-time starter. All out of the bullpen last year for Baltimore. Oh, 
Ozuna takes breaking ball out. It's kind of how Baltimore has pitched him tonight. And Ozuna has popped up two of those pitches and knocked in a run on a fielder's choice ground ball. Morse at third, Gordon at first. Gordon bluffs, Ozuna takes 2 0. Oh. Aggressive, but at the same time, there's that danger if he gets thrown out, the inning fizzles. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. That's a great point, especially with who you have up there and who you have coming up. He's running though, got a good jump. Joseph's throw is not in time. Four stolen bases for D. Gordon tonight. It's only the second time in his career that he's done that. Boy, another good jump, another head first slide. Just does get his hand on the bag. Came into the game trailing Billy Hamilton. Hamilton has 17. D. Gordon had 12 at the time. He's only one behind Billy Hamilton now. Or still at third. Gordon now in scoring position. Ozuna with a base hit here could tie this game up. Hunters 2 2. Breaking ball got him, and you can really see the Orioles with breaking balls out. That's been the pattern all night against Ozuna. The difference in how they pitched Ozuna and Stanton. Ozuna, they've just stayed with breaking balls. The Giancarlo, they'll go in with fastballs, then they'll go back out of way with breaking balls. So here is Stanton, who has struck out twice. And has an RBI single. Hunter misses out 97 on the fastball. Stanton leads all of baseball in runs batted in. Breaking ball for a strike. One and one. Yeah, Harper right behind him with 39 RBIs. John Carlo at 40. That's a strike. Well, that's paint too. One two coming. And he reached out and popped up the breaking ball and Davis behind the bag makes the catch. And if the Marlins are going to squeeze anything more out of this inning. Martin Prado Justin Bohr on deck. Boy Hunter made some perfect pitches. Once he got to that two strikes. You know he was going to stay away. So here's Prado. Singled, lined out, bounced out. Chopper, diving stop there. Machado got him. Manny Machado, a gold glover two years ago, showing off in his first game back in Miami. 6 4 Orioles.
moment, Ricky Nolasco against the Colorado Rockies. And on this moment, on this night, Ricky Nolasco would break Dontro Willis's Marlins win record. 69th win for Nolasco. Nolasco, in 2006, his rookie year on this date, Remember that it is only home run that was against the Cubs and it was at forget what name it was land shark dolphin dolphins one of those had a nice chat with uh, Ricky's brother David who we used to see all the time when the team went out to the West Coast saw him in L.A. Right, if Miami is going to come back in this game they're going to have to quiet down Baltimore's bats Brad Hand. Chris Davis, Travis Snyder, and J.J. Hardy. So he got a couple of lefties first off in Davis and Snyder. Saturday night game tomorrow night. Remember that's on Big Fox. We will be with you. On Sunday afternoon here and then Memorial Day evening in Pittsburgh, which should be a spectacular place for that. Overlooking the river, all the bridges, downtown Pittsburgh. Boy, I bet they'll have some uh, a nice, uh, they usually do a nice fireworks display on the, and on the river. I don't know. I don't think there is a better venue in all of Major League Baseball for a fireworks show than that ballpark a lot of people Pittsburgh. will be uh, standing right there on the Roberto Clemente bridge. There'll be a lot of people in boats on the river. Line to left each row in and then down to his knees to make the catch fighting the lights and coming up with it. Chris Davis hit this ball hard always a tough play when you're in left field. And you've got a ball slicing off the bat of a left-hander, battling the lights a little bit. Keep with that stretching program, Ichiro. It's paying off. He, <laughs> Davis <laughs> hit it on the button. Ichiro is 41, and I will bet you he's the most limber player in Major League Baseball, without question. I have never seen a player be able to do the things that he does stretching wise even in the on deck circle he has a routine that is, uh, is captivating you watch well he, he's constantly stretching so he's you're right he, he's the most limber guy in in this game. Would be a good question, Rich, for, for Ichiro. I'm sure he's done it his whole career, but what what was the influence on him to begin such a regime, such a stretching regime that he's kept up with? No swing. Well, he has his own set of six weight machines, which if you look at them and you've done any weight training in the United States over the last 15 20 years they look like they're from 1975 like out of the uh, Nautilus era pre Nautilus era. <laughs> Swing and a miss there are a series of weights with pulleys and such but when he gets on them and starts rolling you realize right away they are designed for flexibility and strength. Some good pitches. By Brad Hand to retire Travis Snyder. So Brad Hand has come on, gotten a couple of outs, and throwing the ball well. Now, J.J. Hardy, key moment in this ball game was Hardy in the sixth against Henderson Alvarez. Alvarez had walked the first two hitters. And Hardy with a 3 2 count tried to bunt, and he did, but he laid it down right in front 
of the mound. Alvarez picked it up, spun and threw, and he threw it down the left field line. And and I said at the time, I think one of the surprises, the fact that he was bunting on a 3-2 pitch. The Orioles not only would erase Miami's 3-0 lead, they'd score four times after that. It's 6-4 now. Remember Hardy when he first got to the big leagues with Milwaukee, five years with the Brewers. He has won three consecutive gold gloves at short. Will Tapper and Chavaria gets the out. Brad Hands restores some semblance of order. Seventh inning stretch. Miami down a couple. Cuban music here, Cuban Heritage Night tonight, Baltimore and Miami reach the bottom of the seventh. Justin Bohr, JT Real Muto, and Ichiro against Tommy Hunter. Talk about a guy who hasn't had any luck tonight, Justin Bohr, line drive to left for one out. And he hit that ball sharply to first off the glove of Davis, deflected to the second baseman, and they completed the 3 4 1 put up. Bohr cracks one deep, but foul. Bohr hooked a hard shot in that ping pong between Chris Davis and Jimmy Paredes in first and second. Paredes was able to get the ball to Tyler Wilson and get Bohr. He lined the left back in the third. He's had some good swings tonight. That ground ball is going to find center field, and Bohr finally has something to show for a hard hit ball. Yeah, he finally found a hole. Singles to center. His at bats have been good all year, Tommy, and, and you expect that Bohr is going to see more and more playing time, especially if the Marlins struggle to, to score runs, as they have been. Well, without question, and also. Getting into some of the schedule where the Marlins will go into New York, into Toronto, uh, play the Yankees, play the Blue Jays, into Boston, and you got your DH right there. JT Real Muto. On the other hand, I've always been impressed at the way Justin Bohr plays first base. 
Made a nice play earlier tonight. Warren Chris Davis chatting over there. A pair of left handed power bats. It's a pop over there. Davis obviously been in the big leagues a, a long time. The Pirates did finish off the Mets four to one. They beat Noah Syndergaard and they got a brilliant game. From a guy the Marlins are going to have to deal with. And that's uh, Garrett Cole. Wow. Yeah he pitched well. Eight third inning struck out ten. Cole threw 111 pitches. Mark Melanson picked up his 10th save. Syndergaard six innings, four runs, three of them earned for the Mets. Little tapper wide of the mound. Hunter gets there and just gets Real Muto. And here comes Ichiro, who's had a a one for two night. Tell you what, it took an above average effort to make this play because of the speed of JT Real Muto rolls over on that pitch. It was up. Hunter able to recover because he falls off a little to the first base side, changes direction, and then threw about a 95 mile an hour fastball over to Chris Davis. Here is Ichiro now. Singled, walked, and struck out. Shortens the bunt, takes it in, and Bohr is going to get to third base. That looked catchable. We'll see if it's a wild pitch or a pass ball. It, and it almost looked like Ichiro might have screened him out. Yeah. See if he pulled back in time. Looks like he did. That's a pass ball. But he may have screened out. Caleb Joseph. You may not have seen that all the way. Well, with one out, the middle infield's back right now. That's a strike. And so contact on the ground up the middle would shave the lead to just one. Well, a good percentage for each year. What's the average? A little over 50%. Yep. Bill Tapper, Bohr is caught off third. In a rundown, each row's on his way to second, and Bohr will be tagged out. Started to come home on contact and then decided against it. The Marlins, at the very least, do get each row to second, and he's in scoring position. Here comes Echeverria. And it's always a tough judge for a runner. You're going on contact, infield's back, but you also have to make sure the ball gets by the pitcher. So the next rule of thumb, okay, you're going on contact, but you have to make sure it gets by the pitcher. The put out goes one, five, two, six. And each row ends up in second. Here's Ed Chavarria, who's had the best swings of the night for Miami. Three line drive hits. Dave Wallace, the pitching coach for the Orioles, is coming up now. You've got Echeverria here, and then the pitcher spot is up next. Christian Yelich is available. Jeff Baker, Donovan Solano. Even if you're not going to use Yelich here, you want him in the on deck circle so the Orioles see him, and maybe that sways their decision whether to walk Echeverria or pitch around him. In all likelihood, you would use Yelich. You know, a, a little thing. I would also rather have the pinch hitter up there other than the pitcher in case there's a play at the plate to have him let each row know what to do. And a little better view of the pitcher that you may face as yes. well. Two line drive hits to left center, one to right. Check swing, ball in the dirt. Did he go? No swing. As Jordan Baker. Caleb Joseph, busy night behind the plate.
Breaking ball, Echeverria into the bat. And Adam Jones wanders over and makes the catch, and the Marlins leave that runner out in scoring position. Baltimore, 6-4. Board. And Brett Butler uh, talking over that uh, play at third base with the infield back on the chopper back to the mound. Game summary if you're just joining us, Miami jumped to a 3 0 lead, held that lead into the sixth. That sixth inning, we talked about the bunt play, which certainly was a thorn in Miami's side yesterday. They misplayed two bunts, and here tonight, Henderson Alvarez threw one down the left field line. That opened the gates for a four run inning. It is 6 4. Alejandro de Aza, Brad Hand. The eighth inning begins. 11 hits with the four runs for Miami and the one error. Six runs, eight hits for Baltimore. And the four steals by D. Gordon tying Marlins record, tying Luis Castillo. Gordon with a couple of hits to go with those four stolen bases. 19 multi hit games now. In that sixth inning, Alvarez walked three men, one of them intentionally. All three of them scored. And he contributed with his own error, gave up six runs, four earned runs. But we don't usually see the wildness that we saw in that sixth inning from Henderson Alvarez. Whether it was towards the plate or towards third base. And misses up, counts three and two. Obviously, a Friday night full schedule in baseball. The Nationals outlasted the Phillies two to one. Tommy pointed out Max Scherzer is five and three. His ERA is one six seven. How about Drew Storm with his thirteenth save? A walk to Deaza. The Mets beaten by Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Garrett Cole striking out ten in eight innings. Noah Syndergaard the loss. He's now one and two. Cole six and two. Four one Pittsburgh. The Braves. And falling behind the Packers, or I mean the Brewers, <laughs> it's 11 nothing, wow. and it's been 11 nothing for a while. It's top of the seventh in Atlanta.
about the Cardinals in Kansas City Kansas City with a five nothing lead it's only in the fifth inning. Kendrick Morales has hit two home runs already and has five RBIs. Both home runs off Lance Lynn. Joseph trying to bunt and it's 0 and 2. Steve Pierce is on deck. Stays at 0 and 2. Here were Ryan Bronze homered in that Milwaukee bashing of the uh, Braves. Of course, you couldn't say that a long time ago because they used to be the Milwaukee Braves. That's true. They were World Series champions, right? Back in the 50s? 57? Maybe. Was that at Old County Stadium? That's where they played. Real Muto knocks it down, the counts one and two. Long balls tonight. Prince Fielder having a comeback here with Texas. He's hit a couple of home runs already. The uh, Rangers with a 10 to 5 lead against the Yankees. Hands 1 2. Line shot over the head of Gordon into center. Ozuna picks it up. Deaza not slowing down. Caleb Joseph with a protracted at bat. Some solid contact. And Baltimore's got him at the corners with nobody out. And here comes Pierce, who hit the grand slam against Seattle yesterday. All its bullpen in action. Let's see Chuck Hernandez. Sam Dyson looks like he's ready. He's not throwing that hard. Yeah, you know, the frustrating part, Rich, every night, every night, it's Dyson, Morris, Cishek, Cishek, Han, Dyson. It's what happens when a starter has to go after five plus in it.
framing on camera 12. Here at Marlins Park on a Friday night. Sam Dyson out of the bullpen. As Tommy was talking about, this is his 19th appearance. He's got Steve Pierce to deal with. There's nobody out. Miami is down two here in the eighth. Dyson with the two thirds of an inning yesterday, a couple of hits and a run. Played umpire Paul Hevel was over getting some new baseballs. See Alejandro Daza, he's at third base. Caleb Joseph had that long at bat. He's at first. Buck Showalter got a big pinch hit in the fifth inning. RBI double from Delman Young. And he sends up another pinch hitter here. You mentioned earlier in the game, Pierce with a big grand slam for the Orioles yesterday. Ground ball, Prado spins, throws home, and gets him. What a play by Prado. Fully outstretched. Somehow he was able to balance himself and get a fast runner. Diaz is not slow, and he's not happy with himself, is Diaz. I'm not sure Diaz came hard. I think he thought that ball was either going to get through or there wouldn't be a play on him at the plate. Because I was totally surprised that he was out by that much. But a great move. Look at the balance and spin from Martin Prado and then come up with a perfect throw to the plate. Great Real, job. Real Muto with the catch and the tag. And now Dyson faces Manny Machado. And a ground ball could extract him from this inning. Joseph, the runner at second. Pierce at first. Machado made a dazzling dive and throw to start or to finish a Marlin threat that was in the sixth inning. Clobbered and that one goes by Prado and down the line and the Orioles are going to get at least one Joseph comes home Pierce around third he will score and Manny Machado has hurt the fish with his glove and now with his bat yes he has uh, the Manny Machado fan club here tonight having a ball his second hit he has three RBIs and he made a spectacular play earlier in the game. So the Orioles open their lead even more on that two RBI double for Manny Machado. Jimmy Paredes now. That's the one thing. Again, you know, you can say all you want about who you're going to bring in. The second guessers love that. But when you have to bring these guys in every night, as I mentioned, a Dyson, a Morris, c Hand, they're not all going to be perfect every night. And sooner or later, they run out of gas. So sooner or later, you got to get a starter to go seven or eight innings. And if that's possible in this day and age. And you need to be able to get outs when the other team gives them to you, like the Marlins yesterday. You have to make plays. Failed to do on two bunts, and tonight on that ill fated throw by Alvarez in the sixth inning. And that opened the door for four runs. The Orioles have walked right through and taken an 8 4 lead here in the eighth inning.
2 and 2 to Paredes. There's still only one out. It's a four run lead for Baltimore. That one cracked into center field. And that's a base hit. Holding third is Machado. And the Orioles are teeing off right now here in the eighth inning. Third base hit for Jimmy Paredes tonight. Adam Jones. Prado backhand play. He's going to get the out at first. And that's not an easy play to make. Yeah, ball hit in a different area. He's thinking about maybe a, a double play, but not on this ball the way he had to pick it to his backhand that way and had to change his thought process and get the out at first. Chris Davis now with two outs. Henderson Alvarez went five, gave up four. Steve Ciszek, two thirds of an inning. Ciszek. Actually gave up two hits. None of the runs he gave up went to his line. They ended up on Alvarez's line. Brian Morris a third of an inning Brad Hand two runs in an inning and those two runs on base hits allowed by Dyson. One and two. Talk about we had the, the great interview with Earl Weaver's son. You talk about the three run homer associated with Earl Weaver, but he also had guys like Palmer, Cuellar, McNally, and Dobson. <laughs> Earl Weaver was one of the first major league managers to really. Dig into the matchup numbers. He always had a, a good platoon. Who is it? Uh, Lowenstein in left and and Renicky's brother. That was the platoon. Renicky and Lowenstein in yeah. left. But he was really a, one of the first guys to look at matchup numbers, how guys matched up against individual pitchers. Bags are loaded. Comes Travis Snyder. And we won't get a chance to talk to Ron Renicky. About his brother Gary. But we will get a chance to chat with Craig Council when we see the Brewers. Two outs, two more runs across for Baltimore, 8 4, Orioles on top. It's fun looking at the uh, roster a little bit of that uh, Milwaukee Braves. 1957 World Series team. Yeah, we did confirm they did win that World Series 4 3 over the Yankees. 57. Frank Torrey, a little 
been at first base, had a big World Series, couple of home runs. I had Red Shandies was 34, and he was their everyday second baseman. Eddie Matthews would not have guessed that. Yeah. Of course, uh, a young Henry Aaron, he was 23 in right field. Aaron would hit 322 that year. He would slug 600. 27 doubles, 44 homers. Aaron drove in 132. Wow. That Warren Spawn, Looper Death. You know who also pitched on that team? The father of Turner Sports, Ernie Johnson. Ernie Johnson. Ernie Johnson. Count two and two. Bases filled with Orioles. Sam Dyson. And he strikes out Travis Snyder. But Baltimore adds two more and leads it 8 4. Bottom of the eighth inning. All season long, MLB.com at bat gets you up to date. It's the number one app for live baseball. In game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, pitch tracking widget. Who doesn't need a pitch tracking widget? Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablets. Brad Brock. In for Baltimore. David Lowe in left field. Steve Pierce stays in the game. He's at second. Brock pitched a couple of innings in their ball game yesterday. And Christian Yelich gets in at bat. Yelich pinch hitting for the pitcher spot here in the eighth. Miami down four and down to their last six outs. Yelich a tapper out towards short. And Hardy in the dirt. Davis picks it. And there's one out. This was an Ubaldo Jimenez starts. Four innings, seven hits, three runs. And of course, four innings means no win. Tyler Wilson went an inning. Tommy Hunter went two. Here is Brad Brock. I would say if the Orioles go on and win this game, Tommy Hunter could possibly get the win. Here's T. Gordon, one of the bright spots tonight. 
Two hits, four stolen bases. When he came out smoking in the first, line drive single to center, promptly stole second, then stole third, and then scored on a standing hit. And I guess that's the alarming thing about the last two ball games. The Marlins had a similar script yesterday. It was a one run loss, but they had a 3 0 lead. They came out and put three on the board early. That's a roller out to short. Hardy in the dirt. Davis picks another. Well, that's been a, uh, a constant. The last two throws from J.J. Hardy. He's gotten picked by Davis. But you're right, the, the Marlins played the first four innings. They came out and played really aggressive. They got some things going, they made some plays. D. Gordon was a spark. There's that pick by Davis. And then it's really after that throwing error of Henderson Alvarez. Everything just kind of crumbled. AJ Ramos in Miami's pen, who has not had much action because of the nature of the games. And I think the Marlins, having watched. Steve Ciszek go through his struggles in April and early May and some of that. Could have been a residual effect from not getting some work in long stretches of. Games in which the Marlins. Weren't in a position to save a game. It would be wise to get Ramos in and try to keep him sharp. Though the Marlins haven't seen a save opportunity since what uh, Los Angeles, the beginning of this seven-game skid. Yeah, that was back on the 13th. AJ Ramos with his first major league save. Two-two. Ozuna cracks it into right field, falls for a hit. Deaza picks it up. And they will get Stanton in at bat with a runner at first and two outs in the eighth inning. We've been kind of looking around at some of the home runs around baseball. The Yankees have closed the gap a little bit. It's 10 to 8, Texas. A pinch hit, three run homer by Garrett Jones for the pinstripes. Stanton hits a sharp ground ball. Hardy flips on over to Pierce. And Miami is done in the 8-8-4 eight, eight, Baltimore. South Florida Honda dealers by Kubota. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to FloridaCubotaDealers.com. And by Florida Coast Equipment, Florida's largest Kubota dealer. Visit us at FloridaCoastEQ.com.
eight four Baltimore on top opener of a weekend series and for Miami trying to pull out of this tailspin. This would be eight in a row and eleven of twelve. Ninth inning arrives. Great shot of Miami. It would also be nine straight at home that the Marlins have lost. That would be too shy of a team record, which was set between the 94 and 95 seasons. Here's Ramos. Ramos in to get some work. And he throws a strike to J.J. Hardy. Almost worked in game one of the Arizona series. Remember that was a, a 2 2 ball game. Marlins lost it in the 13th, 3 2. the mound Gordon makes the catch now Deaza has walked his last two times up One of the, the really great positives to this point, and have been a lot of them, has been A.J. Ramos. Twenty and a third innings now. He's given up just nine hits. His twenty-six strikeouts. Holding opponents to a 134 batting average. So it's really important to get him the work that he's getting tonight. Ball and a strike. Games wrapping up in the East. Told you that the Nationals beat the Phillies two to one. Max Scherzer another win. Pirates beat the Mets four to one. The Rays win again. They beat Oakland five to two. Chris Archer. Beats former Ray Scott Casper. Well, Archer had an impressive outing here. Full count, three and two. Giants are hot and they're on top at Coors Field, three nothing. Ryan Vogelsong. Throwing a two hit shutout at Coors Field, bottom six. They had the Bumgarner Kershaw matchup last night. Bumgarner and Kershaw have faced off three times already this year. The Giants have won all three of those games. Bumgarner's 2 0. Oh. With a mammoth home run. Yeah, he hit a huge home run off Kershaw. Yes, he did. That's strike three. Ramos strikes out Deaza. Such a great assortment. Maybe got a little help from JT Real Muto and also from Paul Emmel. What the heck?
Caleb Joseph. Now in that sixth inning. All the walks Joseph. Off of Steve Ciszek. Banged it into center field. First guy that Ciszek faced. Baltimore would score four times in that sixth. Ciszek came in with the bags loaded in the sixth and nobody out and all three runs scored. Six runs four earned they all went on Henderson Alvarez line. On paper the Marlins defense in terms of fielding percentage has been the best in the National League for some time but taken a little hit lately it has and even plays that weren't errors yesterday those two bunt plays hurt him Marlins have one error tonight they have 17 Arizona has 17 so does Cincinnati those are the least uh, in the National League. Pierce his second at bat. Fouls it back. Steve Pierce had a real real big year and kind of a breakout year for him last year. And this is a guy that's kind of been somewhat of a journeyman, 11th year pro, fourth year with Baltimore. Lakeland native from Lakeland, Florida. Originally a pirate draft. Just goes to show you last year, played in 102 games. Hit 294, on base was 373, slugged 556, 26 doubles, 21 homers. That's in 102 games. And yet he was designated for assignment in late April. Nobody signed him. Baltimore signed him back, and he would go on to have career highs in just about every category and was a, a, a nice component to a division winner. Yeah, a team that won 96 games. A lot of games, over 600 games in the minor leagues. Always hit. Always hit in the minors. Always showed some power. And so last year, it was uh, Pierce, a guy that a lot of teams passed on. This year, it's Jimmy Paredes, who has been through waivers four times. Those are the guys every once in a while you'll see organizations pick up and boy, they just find a way. Get it, Jim. That might only be for one year. And there may be a reason. And it's a just in case guy, right? Yeah. If, if something happens and you've got a guy in your system just in case. Popped up. Real muto. Out of his reach. There's Paredes, the 25 year old Dominican who's having a, a nice year. He played just 27 games in the big leagues last year with the Royals and with this Baltimore team. Baltimore had gone 14 years without a, a winning season, 14 years without a postseason. And Buck Showalter arrived in 2011, first full year. They were 69 and 93. That was the 14th year. And then 2012, 93 and 69. And a loss to the Yankees in the division series after winning the wild card game in 2012. 
just think it could have gone another way for Buck Showalter when he was a minor league first baseman coming up in the uh, Yankees organization. But the guy who just seemed to play a little more first base than him, Don Mattingly. Showalter would manage Mattingly in his first four years with the Yankees. Little bouncer. Ramos uh, skate save. Got the blocker down and gets the out. Scoreless ninth for Ramos. Miami needs four if they want to keep playing tonight. Jeff Conine looks like his uh, pops is on the yeah, set. Yeah, pops Jerry on the set. See, that's that's what it's come down to. We hey. tried. We pulled out all the stops. Paper fights. It's all presented by Checkers. Jeff Conine's two former teams, right? That's right. Yeah, uh, nine are out there. There's uh, Chuck Hernandez, and AJ Ramos. Ramos looked sharp tonight. Martin Prado against Brad Brock. Last swings for the Marlins in the ninth unless they come up with four runs. Justin Bohr, JT Real Muto also scheduled. Tapper over the middle. Hardy, the gold glover, gets the out. Not spectacular, but very, very very steady. It's almost like he knew, you know, he, he threw a couple of throws in the eighth inning that were short hop because he had time. It's almost like on that play, he knew he had to get over there in a hurry. And he made a nice strong throw to Chris Davis. Their closer, Zach Britton, with nine saves. Started to get loose. Justin Bohr, left center. That ball's kissed and deep and gone. Not too many lefties are going to go oppo at Marlins Park, and you just saw Justin Bohr do it. Second for Bohr, left center. That is a healthy, healthy distance. And that's, you know, the, the difference in Justin Bohr in 2015 is just that, Tommy Hutton. He's not trying to pull everything. He is driving the ball to left center and doing it well. And you, you talk about a confidence boost when you do that. And we saw him line out to left field earlier in the game. When you do that, the confidence builds it. Hey, I can go that way. I can use the entire field. He has the power. 
as you just saw. And again, not many left handers. I have to, to go back and see how many, if any, lefties have gone out in that area. JT Real Muto. Boy, that's some power. Guys would say that's big man territory out there. Justin Bohr is, is that. It's Pierce and he makes the catch and Miami's down to the last out. Here comes Ichiro. Ichiro fan club. <laughs> Ichiro tonight a little bit of history. Surpassing Babe Ruth with his uh, base hit in the second inning. Little tapper up the line, barehanded, and it's down the first baseline. Each row arrives at second. He'll probably pick up a hit. Yeah, that'll probably be, should be a hit, then an error, allowing him to get to second base. And it is. So a couple of hits tonight for each row. And Buck Showalter comes on, and he's going to go to his uh, closer, and this well, all suddenly sudden, becomes a save opportunity. Yeah, all of a sudden it's a save situation. Zach Britton coming in. Kendall Toyota call to the bullpen. 8 5, Baltimore. On deck. And so, by rule, if Zach Britton can bail out Brad Brock, he gets a save. Denny Echeverria with Ichiro standing out at second. Two hits for Ichiro tonight. Donovan Solano is emerged on deck. That's the pitcher spot. And then you've got D. Gordon. Echeverria, three hits tonight. And Britton misses low. Rich, you talk about a lot of opportunities that have slipped away on both sides. Uh, D. 
defense and offense for the Marlins. The Marlins tonight are three for 18 with runners in scoring position. Ed Chavaria, a little dribbler up the line. Zach Britton, one of those that's made the transition back in 11. He started 28 games. But a lot of fastballs, a lot of hard cutters. And he's made that transition and saved 37 games last year. Baltimore was a well oiled machine last year. They led the majors in homers. They had the third best ERA in the American League despite pitching in a, in a hitter's part half the time. At Camden Yards. Echeverria, Britain spins and throws out. Echeverria is out. The Orioles have won it. Marlins will look at the video. The bench seems to think you might as well challenge it, right? No? No and challenge. No challenge. He's out. He's out. Game over. Britain gets a save, and Baltimore gets game one, and the Marlins nosedive continues. They've dropped eight straight, 11 of 12, and an 8-5 final tonight.